Hello everyone and welcome back to the corner. My name is Drac and today we're going to do the final video in our three part series of identifying which monsters are good uh, and which ones are not that are relatively easy to obtain. So the purpose of this series is going to be ruling out things like uh, most of your Nat 4 monsters and up. We're focusing mainly on Nat 2 and Nat 3s. Uh, and these again have to be somewhat easy to obtain in order to appear on our list. So, kind of in light of some of the others, let's go ahead and dive right on in. And these monsters specifically are monsters that are easy to obtain, but are not farmable in the sense that they don't appear in the scenarios, and their food to skill them up does not appear in the scenarios. So, first on our list, one of my all time favorites here, we have. Eileen. Now, Eileen is one of the fairies, and she is amazing for single target damage. I love her for single target attacks, and here's why. So, her first skill does damage three times and has a small chance to stun. Now, the chance to stun never really gets huge. I don't rely on it much, but she actually does a decent amount of damage with this attack. Second skill is a heal. It heals a single target and recovers their HP and removes all debuffs from that target and the heal skills up with attack power so the more attack power the more powerful the heal is. Third skill now this one is her bread and butter it attacks the enemy it's got a really high damage ratio on it and the damage increases by 30 percent for each harmful effect on the target so you put her with the right team um, at a five star maximum I've actually hit 35k crits with this monster I haven't even six starter yet and she's hitting that kind of damage so she's just amazing all around to have if you need a single target uh, damage dealer and it really helps you getting through the early stages of the game to have something like this. Now in the same vein we're gonna jump over to the fire fairy next, Azalea. Now Azalea is just a straight-up damage dealer she has no healing skills but she does have some really good abilities, especially when you consider things like uh, Trial of Ascension or Fighting the Lich in Necropolis. Now, first skill, same thing. Three, attack three times, chance to stun. Second skill fires two arrows. The first arrow hits your target, and the second arrow, arrow fires randomly. If both arrows hit the same target, it stuns the target. Uh, third skill attacks four to six times, hits all enemies, and each attack has a chance to reduce their attack speed for two turns. So you put her on Despair Runes, and sh this monster becomes an amazing stunner for Trial of Ascension. Um, and with any rune set, she can do good in the Lich. So she's just good all around to have. Uh, she won't work in your Giants team, though. You might be able to make her work in Dragons. So if you're still working on Giants and you pull her, set her aside. You don't need her now. She'll come in handy later. Next, uh, I know some of you guys were probably hating on me as you watch the others, but here we have Shannon at last. Now, Shannon is the Wind Pixie. Uh, I believe the game does give you one of her for free when you're doing the new quest lines. Now, you get one, now you got to level her up for the others. Uh, or you got to power her up with others. Now, the Wind, the Fire, and the Water can all appear in the Magic Shop, they can all drop from scrolls, and they can all drop from secret dungeons. So you can find food for her fairly easily. Shouldn't take you too long to get her skilled up. Let's look at what she does, though. This monster is just a must-have for your Giants team, your first Giants team. Uh, her first skill attacks the enemy and has a 50% chance to put Glancing Hit. What Glancing Hit does is it makes it so the, move, uh, the enemy's attack only hits you for like 30% of its normal damage, and it cannot apply negative effects to you. So... It's really good for monsters that have negative effects. It's really good for monsters like the giant that hit really hard normally. Second skill hits all enemies and reduces their attack speed for two turns. When it's fully skilled, it's a 100% chance to reduce their attack speed. So it slows them all down. Third skill buffs your entire party's attack power and defense for three turns. The attack power is nice, but what we're really looking at here... Sorry, ignore that. What we're really looking at here is the third skill. Or, or the the, def the defense for three turns. Wow, that text really threw me off. So what we're looking at, uh, the attack power is not integral, but the defense is. That will make or break you when you're fighting the giants. So she's very good for that. What's the most beautiful thing about Shannon is, 
you can make her effective for a Giants B10 team without ever having to 6-star her. I honestly don't see a reason to ever 6-star Shannon. 5-star is all she needs, and she just needs decent runes. Alright, let's see. That text really threw me off. Now I can't even think. Alright. So, let's look at our Vikings. Now, all the Vikings, in my opinion, are trash. I don't like any of them, except Jansen. And Jansen is kind of situational. I consider him like a, a Bella Light. So if you're having a hard time getting Belletti on, you can get him through a secret dungeon too. He has a higher drop rate than she does. Uh, his first skill uh, has a chance to give a dot. Second skill attacks three times uh, and increases his attack bar with each hit if he gets a crit. So building him high crit is helpful for giving him extra turns. And his third skill fills up the attack bar of all allies by 50%. Again, he's up there with Purian, as 50% is the highest attack bar filler, except for the Garudas, which fill a single target by 100%. And he heals everyone by 15%. So if you don't have Bella, he's a good alternative. And again, some of his food will drop in secret dungeons along with him. And then the fire, the water, and the wind... Or no, not the fire. Forget the fire. The water and the wind will sometimes pop up in the magic shop and then... All three elements can drop from unknown scrolls and social summons. And next, and I believe this is actually the last on my list. This is a much shorter list. I'm sorry, I didn't tell you that earlier. Um, yeah, this is going to be the last two. Are our Vagabonds. First up, we've got Royd. Royd is one that the game gives you early on. Uh, you get him for free. He's You get him right in the tutorial. Most people turn around and feed him. Honestly don't do that. This monster is amazing when he's built correctly. So his first skill, he's an HP based monster. You want to just crank all your HP into him. First skill does damage based on his HP and has a chance to reduce the target's defense. Now when it's fully skilled, I think that's actually a 100% chance when fully skilled. Second attack does not do damage on HP sadly, otherwise he'd be way too broken. But it attacks twice. Each attack has a chance to reduce the target's defense for two turns. Uh, very important when fighting the giant, and good for, you know, other situations as well. And his third skill, this is his bread and butter. Now this one does damage based on his HP, reduces the target's attack bar to zero, and taunts them for one turn. So he reduces their attack bar to zero, and then on their next turn, they have to attack him. So it's almost like you're stealing two turns from them. So he is just great. You tank him up. He does a decent amount of damage. He's got a decent amount of control, and he debuffs the enemy. He is great. Uh, I used him in my Giants team on an alt account for a very long time. I still pop him in now and then. I also love him for Guild Wars because of the control that that third skill gives. Uh, the damage on his third skill is 300%. I think it's 300. might be 200% uh, of his attack stat plus 30% of his HP. So it just hits really, really hard when you've got a lot of HP on there. And then I think the last one that I had on my list is just over here on the light side. We have Darien. Darien is farmable from a secret dungeon. Um, you can get the food for him, the wind and the water, uh, both from the secrets, uh, from secret scrolls, from uh, magic shop, and from uh, Unknown Scrolls, sorry, Secret Dungeons, Unknown Scrolls, Magic Shop, Social Summons. And then the Fire one you can is kind of useless, but you can get him from Secrets as well. So Darien is rather easy to skill up. Um, if you have Diaz already, don't bother with Darien, but if you don't have Diaz yet, Darien is the man. So what he does, he's defense and HP based. Uh, first skill, Swing a Sword. Deal damage uh, equal to your, or a portion of your HP, and reduces their defense, same as Royd. Second, same second skill as Royd as well. Each attack has a 30% chance to reduce the target's attack power attack twice. But it's his third skill, which is a passive, that makes him so awesome. His passive reduces the damage that other allies take by 15%. Does not stack with similar effects. So, that effect, unfortunately, that passive doesn't affect himself but it affects everyone else. So you can take him into Giants, you can take him into Dragons, you can take him into Raid, you can take him into Trial of Ascension, and in any of those scenarios, he reduces the damage that everybody else takes. They're... That benefit is invaluable, especially when you're dealing with Raids. 
And I'm going to do a quick review here. Just scroll down real quick, but I think that was the last one on the list here. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, there is one more. His food's a little harder to obtain, but I feel like I have to mention this guy. Um, and that is our light bear man, Amon. Amon is obtainable through a secret dungeon. All of the bear men are obtainable through secret dungeons. Except I don't think the dark is, but the dark sucks. Don't worry about him. The light one is what we're after. This guy is an HP-based monster that you want to have maximum crit on. Here's why. First attack, chance to provoke the target. Second attack, deals damage based on his max HP. Third attack is a passive. It recovers all allies by 12% of his max HP whenever he crits on his turn. That means that revenge attacks won't trigger his passive. So you want to put violent or speed or swift on him. But every time he crits, he heals the whole party by a percentage of his HP. Definitely worth having. Because all of his forms are obtainable in secret dungeons, he qualifies for the list as something that you can farm and then skill up. And that is all for today. Uh, I'm really hoping that these videos are helping you guys out. If I missed any that you think I should mention, go ahead and bring them up. Type in the comments, subscribe, let me know. And uh, from here on, I think I'm going to do some spotlight videos highlighting some of my favorite monsters and how you should ruin them. Or at least how I think you should ruin them. Uh, any comments, suggestions, let me know. And otherwise, until next time, thanks for tuning in.